always brings you the most daring and delicious street food around. And our new season's gonna bring you, oh, so much more. More cities, more trucks. I stalk them. And much, much more food. Did I mention we also have a cookbook coming out? Eat Street, watch it, read it, eat it. He was Mr. Emotech on System Crash. He's been featured on Last Comic Standing, Just for Laughs, and Comedy Inc. He's a creator of North America's award-winning financial lecture for students called Funny Money, and he currently hosts the hit TV series Eat Street by Pepperoni Films, which features the best street food across North America on Food Network Canada and, U and uh, Cooking Channel US. Uh, it's a great pleasure to speak with actor, comedian, author, and certified foodie James Cunningham. He's recently written a cookbook, Eat Street, there it is, uh, recipes from the tastiest, messiest, and most irresistible food trucks, which has been flying off the shelves in, the, in Canada and the U.S. James, welcome. Chris, thank you for having us, uh, having us on this and, and the interest in, in, our, in our book and our show. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's great to be on, uh, on the show. You're welcome. We're, we're huge fans of the show. We love Eat Street. We were just up in San Francisco for the taping of uh, season four. It was fantastic. Loved it. Uh, you know, so rumor has it you absolutely love eating, but you can't cook to save your life. Love to eat. <laughs> it's, it's actually, it's dead. Now, 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 to people, just so you know, I, 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 it's the very first thing I say in the ice. So before I go any further, I must tell you, by the way, what a great picture of me. Uh, but before I go any further, I must tell you, not a great cook. I am, however, the most important part of this job. A great lover of all foods. I'm, I'm a professional eater, Chris. Now, now you're you're a pretty good cook, though, right? Well, you know, I I try. Uh, I guess you could say I've had a few experiences. I'd probably rather not talk about. Right. <laughs> you know. We'll talk about that in a bit. I, I I heard that one story. We'll we'll, we'll get we'll get to that. We'll get. To that. Yeah. I'm sure you and, no, I, I'm not a cook to save my life. I I'm a, I'm a stand-up comic. Now, my brother, coincidentally, is a brilliant chef, uh, and he's furious at me because I just wrote uh, a, a best-selling cookbook and. Uh, and I really, I, I'm not kidding, I, I burn water. That's how, that's how bad I right am. That's why I always eat out. That's why I'm, I, I'm an, I love to eat. Uh, where I live, uh, I'm, I'm surrounded literally by restaurants and food trucks everywhere. So I just, uh, uh, you know what, I leave it to the professionals, right? I, th I think humor should be left to the professionals. I think cooking should be left to the professionals. I think it's, uh, it's just a better world that way. Well, yeah, I kind of agree. I, I love cooking, but I, I really hate cleaning up after myself after cooking. Exactly. Thank yeah. you. That's exactly it. So I'm also a little bit OCD. So when I when I when my kitchen is clean, I don't want to touch anything. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I totally relate. So I, I eat out far more often than I cook for myself. But you know, it's good because I'm a food critic. But tell me, uh, how do you go from stand-up comic to giving financial advice yeah. to young adults uh, to eating your way across North America on Food Network? Well, I mean, as a, as a performer, uh, you know, in the, uh, in, the, uh, in the entertainment industry, you have to sort of have several things on the go at, at once. It's a very, uh, it's a, it's a very unstable sort of uh, career choice. So I, I have a, a few things going on. I'm a stand-up comic. I've been a stand-up comic for almost 20 years of my life now, uh, all over North America. I host corporate events, and I'm a, I'm a master of ceremonies for a lot of uh, big blue chip corporations. And I also own a company called Funny Money, Inc. But uh, what happened was my phone rang, and it was a guy named Peter Wolf from Party Entertainment. And he said, uh, he said, the Food Network is, uh, we're putting this, this new show together for the Food Network and Cooking Channel. They were shooting down in, uh, in New York City, in Philadelphia, and in Washington. And I, uh, my girlfriend lives in Washington, so I was like, okay, I'm uh, not in Washington. My girlfriend lives in New York. Which no, now I'm going to say, trouble. <laughs> you just got yourself in a lot of trouble. Lives in, in New York. <laughs> so, we, uh, so I flew down and I, I met the folks down there in, uh -huh. in New York and they were shooting. And literally, I met, met Peter and, uh, and our shooter, Shane, and, uh, and Lori, who was the production assistant. And um, then uh, what happened was we just auditioned right there on the street and they looked at it and it was all fingers crossed. And they said, you know what? You're right. He's the perfect host. We love it. Let's do it. And the rest is uh, his history. And it is history. You know, you're the perfect host for the oh, show. Yeah. You, you had an element of humor to it, but you can see, really just see your passion. Like, just, yeah. 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 We, we didn't want to make it like a show where, where I was like, no, what are you doing now? What are you, what are you doing now? Like, what's, oh my gosh, what are you We didn't want to be like in your face. We just wanted to say, you know what? And one thing, well, one conscious decision that we made from the get-go is that we wanted the food truck owners to really be the stars of the show. I'm dying of curiosity, though. Uh, you know, I really want to hear a little bit about funny money, and uh, you know, but you know, who's thinking about finances in high school and college anyway? I mean, isn't it a tradition to graduate, you know, from college and we move into mom's basement? Uh, exactly. You know, we're, we're, we're broke. broke. <laughs> you know, <laughs> exactly. it's, it's exactly. we're in debt. When I was eight, when I was at this, I was like, I should teach this. So I wrote a whole comedy show about uh, about teaching students uh, all about f uh, finances and money. And now we speak to about 100 to 150 thousand students a year, every single year, all over North America. It's a lot of fun. Wow, and, uh, that's fantastic. 
Yeah. You know what, what? What you're doing? Every every parent has to thank you for this. You're you're saving spare rooms, uh, home gyms, man caves. Oh, right. You know. You can know, never have your sewing room back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So thank you. Maybe you pursue, thank you very you know, much. Uh, a hobby in uh, in aquaculture. There's so many things you can do with that spare room once the child moves out. So the show East Street is in its fourth season. Congratulations on that. That's phenomenal. You. Did you did you ever think that it would go this far? No, but you really have no expectation, but I mean, the show is just, it's unbelievable how incredibly hot this show is. Like, I've been doing yeah. a PR tour for the book for the past three, four weeks, and everywhere I go in North America, everyone is going crazy for this show. Yeah, you've got some incredible food trucks in Toronto, actually. Fidel Gastro, Feisty Jack, yes, I think the Gourmet one. Bitches, uh, there's just a few. Um, we've seen them all on the you show. Know. You're North America's food truck guru. Um, w w what would be your top what three choices in Toronto? Uh, you're going to say that. We're always going <laughs> to say that. Yeah, but you're actually confining it to, to a city. Most people just yeah. say, what's your top three food truck? What's your top three? And it's such an impossible, impossible answer. Yeah. Now, for yeah, example, Toronto, uh, my, my hometown here, we have about maybe 25, 30 food trucks. And our GTA population is uh, about five to six million people. Whereas, you know, you know, Portland, Oregon, under a million people, yet 700 food trucks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Austin, Texas, it's 500 food trucks. So, I mean, it's, uh, it's really apples and oranges. Uh, the trucks you're mentioning, the Gourmet Bitches, Fidel Gastro, El Gastronomo Vagabundo, Kaplansky's Deli, Hogtown Smoke, uh, Gorilla Cheese of Hamilton. I mean, we've got some really, really good trucks here. Uh, to say, oh man, one of my favorite trucks, oh, I, 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 can't, I can't even tell you. I mean, I've probably been to hundreds of food trucks all over North America, and I can't tell you which yeah. ones are my favorite. Yeah. The best trucks, in my opinion, are the ones that are just so passionate about what they do. Uh, what really struck me uh, about season four that, that really stood out for me was that a lot of the trucks that we were, we were featuring on season four didn't even exist in season one and two. Exactly. In fact, had several truck owners say to us, like, we didn't, you know, we got the idea for our truck from watching your show. That's the thing, too. It's all unfolding before our eyes on social media. You, you, that's yeah, the beauty absolutely. of it. The beauty of Eat Street, which brings me to my next question, actually. Uh, you know, if I'm looking for something specific like uh, a British uh, Scotch egg or, or a gourmet uh, grilled cheese sandwich or a uh, lobster sandwich or Greek salad, you know, Eat Street has an incredible app. Um, and I, I, I would just love to hear a little bit about uh, your thoughts on the, on the Eat Street app. We did actually, uh, starting from season one, because we realized that social media was a major player in uh, in this food truck revolution. Like that really set things off in a, in a big way. Because now, with Twitter and with Yelp and uh, Facebook, now trucks can build their own fan base, and they do a lot of their communications through Twitter and through uh, through Yelp. So finding a food truck in your city, and this is the thing, a lot of people now, food truck tourism is a massive thing now. People are now planning vacations around food trucks. So what do you do when you get to the city that you've never been to before and you go, where's the food trucks? Well, that's why we, we thought that when we launched the show, we wanted to make this whole thing like a really interactive experience. So uh, we wanted to launch you know, something, a, a tool that people could use to track food trucks. And they developed this app, really, it's a gorgeous app. It's free on iTunes. We've had hundreds of thousands of downloads now. It's really fascinating. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah, it, it's, it's yeah, really yeah. for people that just want to uh, you know, find the food trucks and this is that they're visiting. So it's a GPS-enabled app, and I think that we're available on Droid now, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's yeah. an iPhone yeah. app, but I think it's now available on the, on the Droid store. So, um, you know what, it's a free download, and uh, it's a great way to find the food trucks in, uh, in the city that you're in North America. I, I saw you yeah. on CBS uh, this morning last month. Um, uh, you were talking about the food truck revolution in your cookbook. Yeah. Uh, congratulations, by the way. Uh, the book is called Eat Street Recipes from the Tastiest, Messiest, and Most Irresistible Food Trucks. It's on sale oh, no. now. Nice book, book you have there. there. Thank you. It's everywhere. Amazon, uh, the Stitches and Dishes store. Oh, my wow. You can get it anywhere. Uh, Mine's a little bit war torn already. I just absolutely love this book. But uh, you know, tell us about uh, you've been hitting the bookstores. You've been traveling around on a on a PR campaign. I think. Uh, how has that been going? What's the really? Uh, like? we're, we're just wrapping up now, but I've been all over the place on the book tour, and it's been great meeting the folks. Yeah. And uh, again, just blown away by how many people love the show. Yeah. I mean, it's one of those things where you 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 know you you, you kind of you shoot a TV show, you really don't understand it until you go out and actually meet people. And I mean, uh, you know, hundreds of people show up for signings and show up for live events. It's really really cool. Yeah. yeah. 
So do you think that the cookbook is is a uh, com it completes the interactive experience for the viewer? You know, the show, the app, the blog, social media, now the book. It's all one complete package. How does it all unfold for you? Well, what happened was we were getting a lot of emails and, and uh, phone calls and, uh, and tweets from people saying, you know, hey, I'm watching the show and I'm trying to slow down the parts where the chefs are showing their recipe portions. But you guys move so fast, I can't make this stuff. It's like, oh, we never thought of that. Like we didn't, we didn't put those little sections in the show so that you could actually make the stuff because there's no amounts. There's no. I mean, we're just showing like, you know, hey, coriander, and then we do this, then we do this. Right. We're just the chefs kind of like putting their their little ingredients in, but we didn't put like exact ingredient in the list. So we thought, okay, time for a cookbook because people want to taste the food. The the photography is just. Yeah, I mean, come on, exactly. like what, like what? Um, I want I want yeah. to do a scratch and a sniff book. Yeah. Right? Like it'll be under like so what? Let's do it. I don't care. Exactly. Yeah, I'm a professional right? photographer. I'm, 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 photos really blew my mind. I mean, they're really phenomenal. So there's 135 recipes, and like you said, some of them are secret recipes and family recipes. I don't know how you did it, how you pulled it off. So they, you know, the, the food trucks. Uh, yeah, they just gave uh, they gave gave them up. And the one the one common denominator among all of our food truck owners, I seem to find, and I just seem to hear over and over and over yeah. again, is that they love what they do and they want to make people happy. That's the one thing that you hear over and over again. You go, okay, the most successful trucks are the ones that really want to make people happy through food. And so for them, the recipe is just a tool to do that. So I mean, like, you know, most people won't be able to get down and try their food at their, at their truck. So this recipe is a way for, you know, another extension away for it's them awesome. to get out there. I, you know, and, yeah. thanks to the cookbook, I actually tried poutine right here, uh, which is a nacho gratis yeah. poutine from Smokes. Yeah. Um, I have a clip of that here yeah, now, actually. Um, let's take a look at that. Yeah. I heard the fire, a yeah. little bit of fire down there. Yeah. Pack yeah. those fries down. Pack those fries down. So, yeah, yeah. Leave it to the pros, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Don't try and fry turkey, it's all I'm saying. So, right? yeah. if, if fry scotch, that's my general, just leave the turducken to the, okay? Don't, uh, <laughs> right? So I, yeah. I watch too much Gordon Ramsay. Disclaimer. But, but you know, actually writing this book, uh, has it inspired you to get yourself into the kitchen more at all? And uh, you know, you know I, mean, I, I, I can't anything? really overplay it, but I mean, I do like to make yeah. myself once in a while. Now, I got a panini maker recently, and uh, yeah. I love that. So I make, I made mean, kind of through the sandwiches in the book, and um, um, the uh, 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 there's a couple things, the mac and cheese and the cone I've made, a couple of really, really simple stuff, but. Uh, but what surprised me too, with the book, we wanted to make sure we did, was we keep everything nice and simple. So literally all of the recipes are like one pagers. Everything is very simple and it's very, you know, so, I mean, if you're a skilled chef, there's something in here for you. And if you're just a basic chef and you want to just dabble a little bit, there's a little bit something in there. So we wanted something for everyone. And we didn't just put, you know, like, you know, fries. We didn't just put burgers. We didn't just put your standard street food stuff, like grilled cheese. We got something in there for everyone. We got vegan cuisine. We've got uh, uh, soups. We've got salads. And all this stuff is coming out of the window. It's a food truck. It's unbelievable. It but. It's incredible. You know, James, it's been really great talking with you today. I know we're running short on time. Uh, I want to give you a few plugs before... Uh, so people know where, where to find you. You can catch James Cunningham and Eat Street on Food Network Canada and Cooking Channel in the U.S. Check your local listings. Download the Eat Street app at the App Store and Google Play. Uh, Eat Street recipes for the tastiest, messiest, and most irresistible food trucks. The Companion Cook is on sale now. Bookstores everywhere. Amazon.com, Stitches and Dishes store. Yeah. So grab yeah. yourself a copy and now and stop missing what you could be eating. But, but watch, listen to this book. Listen to this. Whoa. That is a hefty book. It's, yeah, a, uh, it's uh, for more information on empowering students with the knowledge they need to make good financial choices. Save your man cave. Go to funnymoneyinc.com. James, thank you again for taking the time to be with us today. I, it was really great catching up with you. Thanks for, uh, Thanks for being a fan of the show, man. I'm a big fan of Stitches and Dishes. Oh, thank you. Thank All you right. very much. Take, Take care. care.